you see these PLC modules by Xenio that are on the KNX protocol? Well, I'm gonna show you how I wired them within this real world control panel. Let's get into it. Okay guys, we're getting serious now. The first bit of cabling. So this is obviously doing the comms cable and you can see first bit is just getting that ethernet patch lead in there. I wouldn't recommend making up your own patch leads from cat cable, just buy pre-terminated ones, far quicker, far easier. Just do that, get a stock of various lengths and just use those. And then the next bit is getting the length for the K and X comms. And what I do is rather than going, for example, this route and then starting the links here, I'll always go for the furthest path. And that's just in case anything ever moves around in the panel. It probably won't, but you never know. It's just good to have that extra length on there. I mean, when did anyone ever say that a bit of extra length wasn't a good thing? So what I'm doing is I'm coming out of these terminal blocks or these ones here. This is the K and X ones and following the, the ethernet cable. So we're going along here, along here, along here. And then rather than terminating here and then doing the links, we're going all the way along here to this one and then doing the links. So that's obviously a longer cable run than going here to here and that just gives us some flexibility if we ever move anything around in this panel like I said it's unlikely in this panel but this is just a practice that I use and it's it's always served me well so this next bit as you can see is just working out the link lengths across all these PLC modules and you can see here that I've taken off the K and X connectors and I'm actually just fixing them on my bench. So terminating the link cables on my bench at the moment. And then you can see here, I'm just fixing them one by one and then the, the long length here. So that's what they look like. This bit here that you saw with the screwdriver, I'm just making sure there's not a sharp right angled sort of 90 degree bend coming out here and then swooping down. So as you can see, this is what they look like before I bend them down. And you can see here, this is what I'm doing with a screwdriver, just making sure that that bend is a nice curved radius rather than a hard 90 degree angle. This is solid core cable, so there's a higher chance that it could snap over time. So here you can see what they look like and where we're at now on the time lapse video. So yeah, a soft bend down 90 degrees and then yeah, just running along the bottom here. And then the final bit is just terminating that length of K and X cable from the terminal blocks to that first PLC module. So as you can see, do one end off the bench, heat shrink, cable tie, and then work out the length and then do the same with the other end whilst in the panel. So yeah, a bit of heat shrink, some cable ties as you can see here, and then just terminating in those K and X terminals. So yeah, a couple more pictures of what the links look like. This is what I'll do if it's solid core and I'm connecting to screw terminals, like with the extra power that goes down a K and X cable. These are the tools I use. So we've got a box of heat shrink here, Nipex strippers, ergo strippers, and yeah, pretty self-explanatory, the rest of them. And now here you can see the run of that final length of cable from the terminal blocks to the first PLC module. Bit more of a close up going into the KNX terminals and here's another shot. So some people might be asking, why am I not using KNX cable for these bits here? And the reason being is I'm trying to save space in the trunking and just make it easier for other cables to, to run. The, the KNX cable isn't very flexible and it kind of gets in the way when you're wiring with more flexible tri-rated cable. We don't need that same level of protection like the screen and the sheath because these links, they're not running against any other cables. The inputs on these rail quads, they're all extra low voltage control signals. So it's gonna be no potential interference. And anyway, they're raised above these link cables. The only ones that you might be a little bit hesitant around, but it's absolutely fine. I've done this many times and there's plenty of clearance. But this module here, where there's these relay outputs, you might be switching some low voltage, so like 230 volt loads. Again, they're not necessarily noisy, so very low chance of interference, but 
that's where you might be a little bit hesitant but again like i said it's not the best angle here but these links run along the back plate and you can see here these are raised up above the back of the back plate so yeah there's never any issues but that's it's far easier and like i said save space than using lots of like the green cable here it's just far easier to work with Look, looks neater easier to fault find and service etc i don't want to go something like this round like that with a green and then in here and then out with the green in here out like it's just a nightmare to work with so this is a far better neater easier way to work with K&X cable. Obviously it depends on what system you're using, but certainly for K&X, this method works very, very well.